Hey, what's going on, guys? The Horror Man, back on the 31 Days of Horror, with my review of Boys in the Trees. Welcome back to the 31 Days of Horror, or 31 Days of Halloween. Boys in the Trees is a 2016 Australian Halloween film. The movie takes place on Halloween night, 1997. That means, for someone like me, it is super nostalgic. In my opinion, the best Halloween movies are. They capture that nostalgic feel of Halloween's past. It's a certain innocence, or that feeling of being carefree. It was a simpler time in the 90s, and Boys in the Trees is like a time machine to revisit it. This movie blew me away. When it ended, I was tempted to press play and watch it all over again. Obviously, it's currently October, and with only two months left in the year, I can honestly say Boys in the Trees is one of the best films I've watched all year. With it, unfortunately, not having an official physical media release in the U.S., many of you probably haven't seen it, and some may not have even known it exists. As a matter of fact, I only discovered this film recently myself. I'm certainly glad I did, though, because this will undoubtedly be a Halloween season favorite for years to come. Boys in the Trees has been described as Stand By Me, reimagined by Joe Dante and Stanley Kubrick. It's also been described as The Lost Boys meets Donnie Darko. It's really hard to classify it in any specific genre. This film is a coming-of-age story, but it's definitely a horror movie as well. It's Halloween, 1997 and the last day of high school before exams for Corey and his skater friends, who call themselves the Grommets. For those of you questioning the timeline, it does make sense, because the Australian school year follows the calendar year, and usually ends sometime in November or December. Hence why it's the last day of school before exams on Halloween. Corey and his friends dress up in their Halloween costumes, grab their skateboards, and head out into the night. They skate through the seasonally decorated streets and go to the local cemetery to hang out. Corey's friends are considered the in-crowd or the cool kids, but ultimately, they're just bullies. The main victim of their bullying is Corey's former childhood friend, Jonah. They were best friends, in fact, and grew up together. Now, on this 90s present-day Halloween night, Corey finds himself trapped between the past and his future. After finding Jonah at the skate park, Corey agrees to walk him home. On their journey, he agrees to play a childhood game they played when they were young. It includes telling scary stories, breaking rules, and uncovering lost dreams. The childhood friends are not the only ones walking the streets on this late Halloween night. Someone, or something, is following. There is so much to dive into with this film, but I'll leave it at that. Boys in the Trees is an emotional journey, and not just for Corey and Jonah but for us, as the viewers, as well. This one actually hit me pretty hard. It was a heavy dose of nostalgia. The incredible 90s soundtrack alone makes this a time capsule. The Halloween atmosphere is absolutely amazing. The characters are very likable and relatable. Especially Corey, Jonah, and Corey's will-they-won't-they they possible girlfriend... Romany. Romany works the graveyard shift at a gas station convenience store where some of the movie is set. That's another awesome setting in the film. 
Then, of course, there's the skate park and cemetery, which I mentioned earlier. The suburban neighborhood streets are heavily decorated for Halloween. And there is even a scene with a Day of the Dead celebration. I love that the stories Jonah and Corey tell are actually brought to life on screen. We hear their voices narrating the stories, but we see them unfold with the characters about whom they speak. These tales lend some of that genuine creepiness to the film. I love the interactions between Corey and Romany. They have great chemistry. And with a runtime of just under two hours, Boys in the Trees flies by. Specifically, it has an approximate runtime of an hour and 52 minutes. But it feels much, much shorter. Like I said, it ended and I was ready to watch it again. Wow, I loved this movie. I am so happy to have found it and to have it in my collection. This is definitely a Halloween film for Halloween fans. If you love nostalgia in your films, especially 90s nostalgia, you will probably love Boys in the Trees. Have you seen it? If so, what do you think of it? Comment below and let me know. Check back tomorrow as the 31 days continue, leading up to Halloween. Until then, thanks for watching, guys. Hit that thumbs up and be kind, subscribe. <laughs>